Good evening, Zimbabwe. This is Change Raising News. Today is Tuesday, the 24th of September, 2024. The news read by Josephine Mushabaiwa. Here are the news headlines. President Shamisa's supporters say Zimbabweans have to learn from other countries on how to change leadership. Zimbabwean activists lead Africa's push for change at UN Youth Summit. Archies collaborates with National Building Society on developing a teacher's debt resolution plan. And now for the news in detail. President Nelson Shamisa's supporters across the country have said that they are eagerly waiting for him to announce his way forward. This comes after his congratulatory message to the new president of Sri Lanka. Citizens who spoke to Change Radio today said that change is possible and only young people can make it happen. Let's hear more from these comments. Good evening, champions, all champions all over the country, all the four corners of the country of Zimbabwe. I thank you this evening. And I would like to give a note on President Chamsa's message of congratulations to President of Sri Lanka. This shows that our President is, uh, has got a vision. He's one who likes uh, something good. And as citizens of Zimbabwe, we have learned a lot on this. What have we learned on this? One, the new President got 3% in 2019 elections. That is the newly elected uh, Sri Lankan president. This shows that he worked hard together with the citizens and they were cooperating a lot. Secondly, change of leadership is vital in other countries. Zimbabwe and its leaders must learn that changing leadership must be acceptable to allow citizens to live better lives for the betterment of all citizens of the country. Thirdly, he is the ninth president of this country, of Sri Lanka. Zimbabwe has only two presidents since independence in 1980. Meaning that Zimbabwe leaders must copy on these good practices, allowing others to govern the country, not to become dictators. Is what is prevailing in Zimbabwe, like Mugabe was saying, I'm the, uh, I'm the life president of this country. And now this one is now going 23rd, I'll still be there. Right? On the other thing in Mozambique, there is the removal of 75 year old president giving power to a 55 year old shows that the power of young people is essential and the youth must govern. Just see the he's 75, just 75 years. How old is Mangawa? And this new president is 55 years old. We must emulate and cope from other countries. Of course we are, we, 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 we got our sovereignty, but we must also copy good things that is happening, that is prevailing. That is democracy. That is Africa we need. Thank you very much. Yeah, the ongoing United Nations Youth Summit in New York is aimed at bringing African youth to the forefront of global challenges. Zimbabwean activists Honorable Otalo Siziva and Honorable Takuzo Angaziore are also participants advocating for climate action and human rights reform. Participants are driving discussions on sustainable development, peace, and global governance. They are also pushing for reforms like the restructuring of the UN Secretary Council to improve Africa's representation. This event empowers young leaders to play a decisive role in shaping Africa's future. The Amalgamated Rural Teachers Union of Zimbabwe, r is working to address the teachers' debt crisis by collaborating with the National Building Society to develop a debt resolution strategy. NBS, which manages several certain social security funds and savings, will negotiate a plan to help the government and civil servants settle their debts. Advocates argue that this initiative could increase disposable income for households 
and boost aggregate demands supporting economic recovery. Change Radio spoke to Archer's National President, Obed Masaraori, for further insight on the situation. Let's hear him speak. Yeah, so what we are doing basically is to table a proposal before government uh, to say with our teachers are logged in debt. We have uh, 70% of our teachers earning well below uh, 50% of their expected monthly income. So we only have less than 5% of our teachers uh, who are not trapped in unsustainable debt. So we did a solution because we want these teachers to be efficient in the classroom. Uh, we want the households where these teachers come from to have disposable income. When they have disposable income, that can increase aggregate demand, demand which is good for gross domestic product. Uh, so this is a crisis which needs intervention from all players. We have a teacher board a proposal uh, that the National Building Society, which uh, the is holding uh, social security funds for servers and other workers, of course, which is also holding savings for teachers in the name of uh, government IDOE uh, mutual savings funds. Uh, we want to use the NBS uh, as a vehicle uh, to work towards uh, debt relief for teachers. Uh, the NBS should be able to engage the parties that are owned by the owned by different teachers. Uh, then they come up with a debt clearing strategy, and then they leverage the resources that they have already been collecting uh, from uh, workers to clear those particular debts, and then they uh, engage government and the individual civil servants to then come up with a strategy of uh, uh, being paid back by these parties. Of course, the government will come in. There are some teachers who have lived days which are almost over 12 Government can use those 200 days to pay, uh, to, or in other days to pay cash uh, to the bank. Uh, civil servants can also then pay the outstanding balance. But we are sure if government is committed, it can completely settle the debt. And then we have teachers starting on a fresh, fresh threat uh, and finance productivity. In an ongoing program to review citizens, MPs and councillors, our reporter Kokelani Tane spoke to residents of Manikalan's Muchari Central constituency. The citizens testified that Honourable Brian James is working very hard in the constituency. Let's hear a testimony from Mrs. Norma Mapungwana. In Indonesia, Numita Mapungwana Ward 10 from Tare Central Constituency. Inova iyo inutunga mirirwa na Honorable Brian James. Uh, constituency i ndaka zimirira ndaka mirira wa garwemu. Turukura kizwa kute. Turukufara shukuru. Nukuda kwa utunga miriri uyo. Nikuti mu utunga miriri wa wako vashwa waka pinda. Chandino ziwa ni chandino pupurashwa kanaka. Dino pupura zwa kanaka zwa wano ita. Nizwa ndaka ona nemiso angu. Muka pinda mkonsichu enzi ya ona rebo Brian James. Ijiji. Marodi esi arimamu imomo akanaka. Maiwa musi na marodi akanaka. Asi makatunga ugaziru wa marodi. Amuna kana putu. Dino pupura wano wa gari wewa ditu wewa dichi. Konsichu enzi esi zwa ayu. Unongo una kuti there is development. Shino shiru kufamba. Tishisi ya nye ze marodi. Tutura nye ya ze. 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 Ze shupatara. Mune shupatara chirimomo. Chesa kuwa ya uta center. Chere kutari siru wakuti. Shino fanonga. Chichito. Chichibudiriza. Chichisimu kira wapa. Chichipachiri yiko zino. Ona rebo Brian James waka enda kuna shupatara ichi. Paka gaziru wa shaka gaziru wa pashipata ni chocho. Aji shati fa peri za zwa chwa sa zwa pera zwa si. Asi, he is trying his best kuti chipata ni chinge chiche simuka. He is trying his best kuti maternity wingi i inge chiche simuka. Tinoto izu ya zizu this past week i. Waka tutunura e plamba. Kuti ayende anonzi wa paruku shota. Parda kuwe zero in terms of gizas. And all plumbing issues is rukit kai papo. So I congratulate my honorable as of now. Uh, I wish him long live. I wish him the best. He is trying by all means. 
kugadzira constituency yao within this short space time cha hiyo ya wapinda wa, wa, pachigaro ndinoona kuti there is change and change in the constituency to you honorable brian james may the lord bless you our reporter also spoke to mr aaron mukotani let him more from him ndiroda kukutenda zvikuru nemubunzo wamangi bunza concerning our honorable mp the honorable brian james the honorable brian james arikushinda zvakanaka chaizvo chaizvo nema kanzira za edu wanosanganisira kanzira nyamana na kanzira matsiya honorable brian james vari kuatenda all parliamentary sessions vachibvunza mubunzo ine musoro uye vachita kubasa ritambe zvakanaka atenda zvikuru in Maboko, people are dealing with a serious water shortage because of a drought caused by El Nino. Many are waking up as early as 3 a.m. to wait in line for water at local boreholes. The problem is made worse by reports that corrupt officials are charging fees to access a borehole that was meant to be free for everyone. Families are upset and are demanding that these officials be held responsible for their actions. This situation shows the urgent need to find solutions to the drought and stop corruption in water management. Meanwhile, in a report seen by Change Radio, major retailers in Zimbabwe, including TM, Pick and Pay, and OK, warned that they may have to shut down due to problems with exchange rates and strict rules from the central bank. Our reporter gives us more. They stated that while manufacturers use higher parallel market rates to set prices, the central bank forces them to use a lower official rate, leading to significant losses. This has made it difficult for retailers to compete, causing many consumers to tend to informal markets instead. The retailers are asking for the currency to be allowed to float freely so that exchange rates can reflect real market values, and they want the central bank to reduce its strict monitoring role. They also suggested offering discounts to customers who pay in foreign currency to help manage costs. Zimbabwe's new currency, the gold backed ZIG, has been losing value rapidly, putting pressure on the economy. Reporting for Change Radio Bulawayo, this is Machaham Kamlandava. Eight passport officers in Harare have been arrested for corruption and issuing fraudulent Zimbabwean passports to four Cameroonians. Our reporter gives us more. The officers faced charges of criminal abuse of office after the Cameroonians were caught at Bay Bridge trying to enter South Africa. Investigations revealed that the Cameroonians obtained fake birth certificates, claimed to have lost their IDs and paid $170 for the expedited passports, which were issued within two days. Police believe there was a network of officials involved, and the Cameroonians reportedly paid 1500 each for the passports to travel to the UK via South Africa. Reporting for Change Radio, Bulawayo, this is Machaha Mkamlandawa. Two men were arrested in Bybridge, Zimbabwe, for attempting to smuggle 22 goats and eight sheep across an illegal border crossing. The suspect, Albert Koki, 63, and Wazani Munyayi, could not provide the necessary police clearance and veterinary permits for transporting the livestock. Stock theft is a serious crime in Zimbabwe, punishable by up to 10 years in prison. Approximately 33,000 Mozambicans living in Zimbabwe will vote in the upcoming elections on October 9, 2024, to elect a successor to President Philippe Nyusi and 250 members of parliament, showcasing Mozambique's dedication to diaspora voting. Mozambique's approach to diaspora voting serves as an important example to Zimbabwe on engaging citizens abroad. In international news, as South Africans celebrate Heritage Day, some residents of Metalang in Fixburg in the Free Strait are not happy that a number of heritage sites have been closed. The WHO earlier this week revealed that each year, nearly 5.4 million people are bitten by snakes worldwide 
resulting in over 800,000 deaths and leaving three times that number of survivors with disabilities. Prompt administration of antivenoms can save lives and limit the long-term health consequences. In sports news, Dynamo's captain Frank Makarati and defender Tendai Shemagwasa were reportedly involved in a road accident. The accident reportedly took place when the two were on their way home in Shumbiza following their arrival from Botswana for the CAF Confederation Cup. Both are said to be in a stable condition. The Zimbabwe Football Association has announced the appointment of Tite Telewe, Fingi 15 Sibanda, as the new head coach of the Zimbabwe Women's Senior National Team, the Mighty Warriors. Sibanda, a holder of the CAF coaching license, is set to lead the team as they prepare for the upcoming Kusafa Cup tournament, scheduled to take place in October in Port Elizabeth, South Africa. To end the news, here are the headlines once again. President Shamisa's supporters say Zimbabweans have to learn from other countries on how to change leadership. Zimbabwean activists lead Africa's push for change at UN Youth Summit. Archies collaborates with National Building Society on developing a teacher's debt resolution plan. That concludes this news bulletin. Thank you for listening. For myself, Josephine Mutabaiwa, and the entire team at Change Radio. Have a good night.